Hi vlog, welcome back to my guys. <laughs> selamat malam, itu kan jadi kecepatan. Selamat malam, selamat pagi, selamat siang. Apa kabar guys? Semoga semuanya di dalam keadaan sehat dan bias. Sekarang udara lagi panas banget. Tapi hari ini ada session coaching uh, sama coach aku yang uh, cakep banget, manis, <laughs> terus <laughs> terus seksi, <laughs> terus uh, segalanya deh. <laughs> Jadi bersemangat kalau lo datang untuk latihan di sini. <laughs> Indonesian. Oh, okay, yeah, so. Uh, here. Here, yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my name is Craig Barnard. Um, I am a tennis coach from the UK uh, near Wimbledon, which you probably heard of Wimbledon. And um, yeah, I now coach in Dubai. And uh, met Riri here, oh, about what, two months? Yeah. About two months ago now. Um, we see each other nearly every day. Yeah. I did boxing for a long time. Boxing? Boxing and Thai boxing, Muay Thai. Um, but I kept getting injured a lot, you mm -hmm. know, with like your knuckles and your wrists when I'm playing tennis, so I didn't do that. Um, I played football when I was very, very young. Um, but besides that, just uh, just boxing and tennis and, and then uh, lots of running and, and sort of training and different things like this. And mm -hmm. yeah, not, not, not really too much sport. The problem is when you get to the age of 12, 13, 14 years old, you have to, if you want to be a professional sports person in one sport, you have to really commit to, to try and uh, focus on, on that one sport and then that, that takes you takes you a lot of your time uh, and money as well. It's, it's expensive when you're growing up, you know. Oh, wow. So you just have to travel a lot to different tournaments uh, all over the world, so, yeah. Uh one question from my netizen is they just curious about uh, what color for your eyes my eyes yeah my eyes it's are blue my eyes gray. are blue blue very blue why who, who wants to know what color my eyes are my 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 your followers. mom your mom my, my followers oh your followers not your mom <laughs> okay <laughs> okay well yeah well, uh, well followers my eyes are blue blue yeah, you don't have many people with blue eyes in your country. Okay. But I have blue blood. Blue blood. <laughs> I have green blood, blue eyes, and brown hair. Brown and a little hair. bit, little bit grey, a little, little bit of grey. But that's because it's good to be a little bit grey, like a silver fox. Have you ever heard of a silver fox? Mm -hmm. Silver fox, not yeah. red fox. Silver fox, yeah. Oh, I mean, a lot of my achievements in playing came when I was uh, a junior, when I was between the age of 10 years old and, and 15, 16 years old. Um, and then I played some, some sort of tour events, like qualifying events for some tour events. But like I mentioned earlier, I got ill, um, really, really badly ill. I spent four months in hospital when I was 18. 
Um, so yeah, I, I got Crohn's disease uh, and I was stopped out of hospital, in hospital. Every time I came out of hospital, I'd then try and train again and I'd, I'd get ill again. Um, so then that I would, I would pursue uh, a career in coaching and tech training players and you know I've, I've coached some some really really uh, great players some really good players who have who have gone on to get world rankings and, uh, and and they're really really nice people you know and you know some of these guys you know you, you see a lot of some guys who are playing and they get to in the top 100 in the world but there's also um, a lot of players out there who are between 300 and 1,000 in the world who are absolutely phenomenal players traveling all over the world every every week trying to to break through to to make it as a professional tennis player and it's a it's a really hard journey it's a really hard uh, you know time out there and and they work so hard every day and, and not everybody can be top 100 you know there's thousands of people trying but not everyone can can get quite there so but yeah you know I work with sort of some really good players some some of these players who have have now moved on to sort of like top 200 in the world uh, and other players who have you know they've, they've decided to stop playing and then they've gone into to training players and coaching players as well so they've gained a, a career down a different route uh, so they're probably my, my biggest accomplishments actually working with players who are five six hundred in the world and and then getting inside the top 300 in the world because those those jumps are very very small but it takes a lot of work to get there and you know these, these guys have uh, it's a big team effort, really. You travel around the world with these players, you see. So my my son is actually in the uh, Everton. He's a footballer. So he's he, he he played tennis until the age of about twelve, um, and then he decided the football was his passion, and um, he he now plays for Everton Football Club, which is a Premier League football club uh, in in England. Um, so he's in this, he's got a scholarship there. So he's in the in the scholars there. He's 17 years old. So he plays for the under 18 squad uh, at Everton. So he's following, uh, trying to be as best he can at football. Uh, and my daughter, I've got two daughters as well, and they they don't really play tennis, no, because I think the thing is the problem is because I I spend so much time away from family, and uh, being tra traveling with tennis players, the, my children sort of think, and my uh, also my ex-wife sort of thinks. You know, tennis is uh, what makes you, you travel and leave your family to go and do this, you see. And I think my children think that tennis is, is one of those things that's going to... They don't really want to do that, but that's, um, that's fine. I don't want my kids to, to do what they enjoy and, you know, I'll always back them to do that. But, the, uh, the, uh, you know, they do lots of dance and they do lots of sort of uh, productions and they do shows. They're very good at dancing and, and then they play a little bit of football as well now, actually, my daughters. So, yeah. Advantages of playing tennis. Yeah. So when you're, I mean, the, the good thing about tennis is it's an individual sport. So you, you're in one-on-one -on -one combat. You're, you're on your own against somebody else, uh, and they, you know, they're trying to beat you. You're trying to beat them. You have to face all different sorts of adversity. You have to be physically fit. You have to be very quick thinking. You have to show a discipline over many years to to nurture your shots, so your shots become very consistent over and over again, time after time after time. Um, and that, that requires uh, a, a discipline and a commitment that you, you can prove to show this. And I think when people finish playing tennis, they've got the option of going straight into a coaching job where they're gonna earn a good living, they're gonna be meeting with nice people, they're gonna be working, they've got options to go different directions, whether they, they work with uh, high level players or, or club players or some, ju some younger juniors who are just starting to play. Um, so they, there's lots of different options for them. Um, I think tennis also gives you good opportunity, um, like for myself, when you can get like a scholarship to a, a university. Uh, I think that's a, that's a huge thing um, because like in America, the, the, the facilities are, are amazing for, for college tennis. Uh, and actually, I think there's in the semi-finals of Wimbledon this year, there's 10 players, men and women, who went through college tennis in America and it managed to make the semi-finals of, of Wimbledon, whether it's singles or doubles or mixed doubles. Um, you know, so that proves that you know, tennis can give you an academic education, but also can, can you can pursue playing your, your sport as well. And then you've got options when you, you finish your degree and then you can go, okay, I've finished my degree. I'm, I'm very good at tennis. 
I get to choose now where I want to go. And that, that's, a, that's a really good option. A lot of people finish university and they kind of go, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And, uh, and then also tennis players finish playing tennis and then they go, well, I don't have any qualifications. I just, I can only really play tennis. So I think like going to college, it's, it's an amazing thing because not only you do get a subsidized uh, education because you're good at your sport and a scholarship, you obviously uh, you get to the age of 21, 22 years old when you finish your degree, and uh, and then you can say, well, okay, I'm gonna stop playing tennis, but I'm gonna go down a more academic or com like sort of traditional work life, or I'm gonna pursue my tennis in a professional way, but I know I've got a degree to fall back on when I finish my tennis career. Or you can then go, okay, I'm gonna go into coaching and I'm gonna work in that way, you know. So it gives you it gives you lots of options as well. And it teaches you a, a lot of lessons along the way as well, I think. That's the reason why you make a plan to travel to tennis for Dubai. Or? The reason why I came to Dubai. Well, I mean, like like so many people with the uh, with COVID. Um, so in the UK, uh, was closed. It was closed. We were unable to play tennis indoors. The weather is always raining. It's always cold. We were never, we were unable to go in indoors because uh, indoor areas were, were were closed. Outdoor areas then became closed as well. Whereas the UAE, Dubai and Abu Dhabi uh, was, was open. They did a one lockdown for three months and then it was open the whole year. So I decided to come to Dubai uh, because there was the option of working here. I knew quite a few coaches here. I knew a few players here. Um, you know, some, some coaches I've known for 20 years came over here 10 years ago. And they said, yeah, it's, a, it's great to come and, and work in Dubai. And, and you, you'll meet so many different people. And that's the one thing I really actually loved about, about Dubai more than anything. It might not have the, the high level of players that, you, that I used to work with, but it has um, lots of players that want to get better. Uh, it also has so many people from all different parts of the world. And you, you get to meet so many, like, like today, I've just met you. You know, so like, you know, tomorrow I'll meet somebody else from, from some other place in, in, or somewhere in Africa or South America or Australia. Or, 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 or Russia, I probably shouldn't say that right now with the way things are going on. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like from, from everywhere, you know, there's people from Europe, Spain, everyone, there's lots of expats from lots of different parts of the world. And it's uh, this last 12 months, I've been here one year. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. I plan on probably staying here for another four years. Yeah, do five years in total, I think. That's my plan. So. I mean, I think that the thing about tennis is, the biggest thing I say to people is if you can try and keep as fit and as healthy as possible, you can move around the court, so therefore you're in the best position to hit every shot. If you, if you are not able to move and you're unhealthy, I think that's a good thing for life as well, obviously. But I think for this person, uh, especially for tennis, if you can move a little bit and find a good position, tennis is all about consistency and repetition. So you have to learn and master the same skills and it feels like you're doing the same thing over and over again. But your body has to remember it. So because the ball comes, you have half a second between one ball, the next ball, the next ball. So you don't have time to think this whole process. So you have to be able to just automatically play the swing, automatically see the ball react. Don't think, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this. So it's, it's repetition and being able to physically be in the right place at the right time, all the time. That's, that's a really, really important thing. Um, and, and try and just relax as well. Like if you're, if you're not relaxed and you're not enjoying it, you tighten up, you don't learn right. You know, you have to have fun, you have to enjoy it. Um, and watch as well. Watch the professionals play, watch, watch a lot of tennis because you start learning, oh well, when the poor person hits the serve, they return it this place all the time. And you might not know why, but you just know they do it. So therefore you will then adopt this when you play. I think uh, a lot of people can, can learn a lot from watching and then they just learn from watching things. That's a, that's a, a big thing for when you first start as well. And, and, and also, when you've never played, make sure you take lessons because if you learn bad habits from playing yourself, it's very hard to undo those bad habits. And then, you know, you're, you're then trying to spending more money, more time with a coach trying to undo bad habits to then put the, the correct techniques in place as well. You can obviously go on uh, on Instagram. You can, you can go on, on different things like, like, for example, Dubai is very much uh, a social media place. 
Uh, they don't have like traditional tennis clubs in Dubai. So like if you go to Europe or you go to other parts of the world, Australia, America, South America, you would have a tennis club. So you could go to your local tennis club. Most towns, most villages would have a tennis club with seven or eight tennis courts. You go down there and you could you could engage with a with a club night or or with people who are members of a club. Here they don't have member like clubs uh, at all really. Um, they don't have any actual club members of clubs. Like Riri contacted me on Instagram, you know, uh, because this is a very much a social media place. You, you as you see, Dubai is. It's all about social media. It's uh, it's all about sort of Instagram, TikTok, for Facebook, YouTube, um, and and that's that's how you would find out a lot of that a lot of these places. A lot of the, the tennis courts uh, in Dubai are at sort of the, the more exclusive hotels, like five star hotels. You also have tennis courts, lots of tennis courts within uh, the living communities, but you can't get uh, lessons there. But you could probably, if you live in one of these communities, you could probably access a tennis court. Uh, and free of charge, that would come with your with your living arrangement. Um, but most hotels have have academies attached to the hotels. Like we've got four tennis courts here at the Ritz Carlton, and we're in a really sort of really strong location, right in the middle of JBR. Uh, and Marina's just across the road there. So we have lots of tourists coming to to this part of Dubai. Uh, so it's very easily accessible for them to play tennis here, as along with thousands of residents as well. Um, so, so we're quite fortunate here because we have four courts, but lots of the hotels have one or two courts. I think um, like on the Palm, for example, there's, I think there's seven or eight hotels, six of them have a tennis court. They all have one tennis court. But we're going to do a bit of a tour, I think, around, uh, around Dubai and we're going to have a little look around all the, all the tennis courts and all those options. So uh, we'll stay tuned for that one because then people, when people come here, they'll be able to know, oh, this place has a tennis court. I saw it. I saw it. That's what we're going to look towards doing at some point, I think, aren't we? Yeah, so my Instagram is uh, tennishealthworld underscore DXB. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Craig. Um, it's a good time for me and for my team for interview you. Yeah. And then get the good information for all my followers. Happy for that. And then, yeah. No, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, it's a pleasure meeting you yeah. all as well. And uh, hello, all of Riri's followers. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> don't forget to follow us. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow you. And don't, follow, and don't forget to follow me. So yeah. if you follow me, I'll follow you back. There we go. We all follow each other. It's all be one happy network here, isn't it? Okay, okay guys, okay. thank you. See you the vlog yang berikutnya. Love you all. My eyes are blue. My eyes are blue. Blue. Very blue. Why? Who, who wants to know what colour my eyes are? My, my, my your followers. Mom, your mum. My, my followers. Oh, your followers, not your mum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, well, uh, well, followers, my eyes are blue. Blue. Yeah, you don't have many people with blue eyes in your country. But I have blue blood. Blue blood. <laughs> I have green blood, blue eyes, and brown hair. Brown and a little hair. bit, little bit little grey. A little bit of grey. 